Have you ever had to operate in the rural environment where your only water supply is a shallow source? If so, you know that it can be extremely challenging to utilize that source efficiently. A rumble! <laughs> in this video, we're gonna show you how to evaluate a shallow source and determine whether or not it can be used for your rural water supply operations. We're also going to show you how to dam that shallow source to build some depth to make it usable for a centrifugal fire pump to draft from. The first thing that we need to do in order to determine whether or not our source is viable or not is to determine whether the source is stagnant or flowing. A stagnant shallow source should be avoided at all costs because there's really not much we can do with it. The fact that it is shallow cannot be overcome. On the contrary, if we have a flowing shallow source, there is a lot that we can do with it. If the water source is flowing and more importantly flowing fast enough, that indicates that there is a replenishable amount of water that is coming every so often. Viewers should understand that this math to determine the flow rate of this creek should not and probably won't be done on the actual fire scene. This is information that should be done during a pre-planning process when a fire department or jurisdiction is evaluating viable water supplies in their response district. Next, we need to determine how much water that is. And in order to calculate that, we need to know three things. We need to know the average depth of that source. We need to know the average width of the source, and we need to know how fast the water is moving downstream. The most challenging component of this uh, equation is figuring out what the velocity of the water is, or how fast the water is moving. There are a couple options that we have at our disposal for figuring this out. What I like to do is take a 10-foot section of hard sleeve and put it on the bank of the shore. This is going to be my starting and end point for my calculation. You should find a buoyant object such as a twig or anything else that will float in the water. Next, you are going to take that object and place it in the water on the upstream side of the hard sleeve. Now you are going to time how long it takes that object to move over the entire length of the hard sleeve. Once it gets to the end point, you should stop your timer. That time is going to be utilized to determine the velocity of the water in feet per minute. Once we have this information, we are going to take the average depth and multiply it by the average width, then multiply it by the velocity of the water, and then we multiply it by 7.5 because there are seven and a half gallons of water per cubic foot. This is going to give us the gallon per minute flow rate of this stream. One very important consideration that the pump operator must make during a damming operation is to determine whether it is important to put the dam in service first or put hard sleeve in the water source first. This is gonna be solely based on the level of water initially. Our recommendation is to go ahead and deploy the dam first. Once the dam is deployed and the water level raises up deep enough for a strainer to be sufficiently submerged, the intake should be put in service and primed. However, if the operator decides that they are only putting a damming operation in service because they want a little bit more depth than what they currently have, our recommendation is go ahead and get the strainer in the water, prime the intake, get water flowing, and then go ahead and deploy the damming operation. In this video, you will see us deploying the dam first because the water level wasn't quite deep enough to sufficiently get the strainers into play. If your calculations lead you to determine that the source is viable, you can now begin a damming operation. There are a couple pieces of equipment that are absolutely critical in order to make this operation efficient. First of all, you will need a ground ladder. 
The length of the ladder is going to be dependent completely on the width of the stream. For more narrow streams, the best choice may be a roof ladder. If the stream is a little bit wider, we may elect to use an extension ladder. For extremely wide sources, it is not uncommon to have to tie multiple ladders together to completely dam off the stream from bank to bank. But the choice of ladder is going to be completely dictated by the source that you're using. Once you have determined the ladder size that you need, you need to make sure that you have enough tarps in order to create the dam. The firefighters operating at the source should unfold the tarps completely and then take the ground ladder and place it on top of the unfolded tarp. Now the firefighters are going to roll the ladder up in the tarp until there is a tail that is approximately three feet long. This tail is absolutely critical to the success of the damming operation because it prevents underflow current from going around the dam and it allows the dam to actually build some depth. Before placing the dam assembly into the water, firefighters have to assemble the necessary hand tools that will be utilized as bracing for the dam. These include halligan bars, short pike poles, or any similar uh, hand tool or other equipment. Once this has been assembled and put near the bank, firefighters can now bring the dam assembly into the stream to complete the damming process. The pike poles and halligan bars will be utilized as the bracing on the downstream side of the dam to prevent the dam itself from tipping over as that depth builds. Firefighters must make sure that the tail that was made previously is facing upstream. This is going to prevent any underflow current from going around and it will allow the dam to build some depth. Once the dam is appropriately placed, the tail should be pushed under the water and firefighters may need to grab some heavy objects such as nearby rocks or other pieces of equipment to keep that tail from flowing underneath the dam itself. While that is occurring, the hand tools should be placed on the downstream side of the dam to act as bracing. This will help prevent the dam from falling over once a sufficient depth has been reached. After the dam has been completed and the water level has reached a sufficient depth, Firefighters should now begin placing hard sleeve and strainers into the water source for a drafting operation. The type of strainer used is going to be dictated by how deep you can get the water level and the equipment that you have available to you. In a traditional pumper driver operator course, we will tell you that you should be utilizing a barrel strainer only if you have two feet of water in all directions. Performing a damming operation may not allow you to reach this depth. Therefore, if the shallow source has a relatively clean bottom, it is perfectly acceptable to utilize a low-level strainer in these instances. A word of caution, make sure that when you are employing your strainers, you do not put them right up against the dam. I like to keep a several foot buffer between where my strainers enter the water and where the dam actually is. This is because as materials that are floating in the water get to your dam, they will collect. This increases the potential that that debris will get into the strainer and cause a clogging issue. If your low level strainer is equipped with a jet siphon, it is always recommended to attach an inch and three quarter hand line to the jet siphon attachment, regardless of whether or not the operator intends on performing the pressurized prime technique. This is because if trash does collect near the strainer, it affords the operator an option for blowing out that trash. All the pump operator will have to do is close the intake of the pumper, reopen the tank to pump line, 
and then charge the inch and three quarter line feeding the jet siphon device. This will cause the water entering up the hard sleeve to hit the closed valve, build a little bit of pressure and blow any trash out of the strainer itself. Another option for your strainer choice is to use a box strainer. This prevents any trash that may be at the bottom of your shallow creek from entering the strainer like it would a low level strainer. This is because the box strainer pulls water from the top side of the strainer assembly. With this, firefighters must ensure that they have a sufficient depth of water. If they don't, what is likely to happen when utilizing a box strainer is that you may get whirlpools that enter the pump and therefore affect your drafting ability. This can sometimes be prevented by putting a float to the box strainer that acts to break up the whirlpools. Another option to help prevent whirlpools and trash from getting near the strainers is to put an inch and three quarter hand line on the ground with a fog nozzle attached. This allows a firefighter to spray a narrow fog pattern around the strainers that will keep floating debris away and also break up any whirlpools that form. It is critically important that firefighters remember that they should not put the fog nozzle on a straight stream pattern. Doing so will cause the water to plunge into the source that will either stir up sediment or entrain air into the hard sleeve that may cause the pumper to lose its prime. In conclusion, there are multiple ways to deal with a shallow water source. However, the preferred method is to perform a damming operation. This allows firefighters to utilize unsuspecting sources that they may otherwise have counted out as an option in the rural environment. Remember, the only way for you to get greedy with your water is to go out and identify those usable water sources.